mean, we're going through a period of transition in America right now. Um, you know, you've had the Fed telling everybody that interest rates are going to be going up for the, next, for the last year, and the economy is transitioning from a period of, of a difficult time to one of normalcy. And so the normal, you know, a normal uh, economy we haven't seen in, in many years, and so the markets really don't know how to react to that. And so, you know, you're looking at the, the volatility in the market, and it's just kind of a normal uh, uh, situation of, you know, the U.S. market looking very good up to now, but the question is, how does it look going forward, and then in the, in the environment where the rest of the world is pretty weak. And so, you know, I would say that as an investor, we've been telling all our clients to focus on fundamentals as opposed to just being defensive and, and just buy, buying toilet paper and, and pharmaceutical products. I think, you know, healthcare and consumer staples have historically been, been very defensive, but there's actually a lot of very defensive blue chip names that we've been talking about today that are just as, you know, fundamentally strong, and they'll probably do, do pretty well. I mean, one, one name would be POSCO in Korea. You know, here's a company, okay, it's, steel, it's a steel company, but at the same time, you know, for the last 20 years, the company has grown its book value per share every year. I mean, it's a very defensive company in terms of how it's well managed, um, good quality products, and, and a very well, or, you know, and it's in the process of restructuring itself. Uh, Toyota in Japan, very strong balance sheet, uh, growing its business in North America. You know, Samsung Electric, yes, you know, cell phone sales are weak this quarter, but it's going to get better next quarter. So I think the whole point is to really focus on fundamentals. And as you mentioned, oil prices are lower. People are going to have more money to spend. Um, you know, Christmas will actually be probably a pretty good year. Yeah, well, Peter, let me just get your take on the big IPO, Recruit IPO, taking place in Tokyo, second biggest of the year. And you got to hand it to them in a really right. down market. I mean, they're holding up pretty well. In fact, CLSA just came out with a, a new buy call on Recruit, uh, looking at for 4,450 yen for the stock. Uh, what do you think of this debut? And if it goes down, would you buy in? Well, I mean, we're fundamental value investors, and you know, we, we looked at Recruit when, when it did come out. Um, it, was, it was being marketed at the same time as uh, the same point as Alibaba. So a lot of the people who were, who were buying on the, on the IPO were also looking at Alibaba, and the markets were a lot more accelerated. I mean, just looking at the markets right now, we are at a, you know, it's a 10% correction. And the question is, is this, you know, this normally happens when the markets are, are inflated. You get that correction. You know, recruit um, the valuations. You know, we, I can't really mention what we do, but, um, but the valuations compared to, let's say, you know, manpower in the U.S. and some of the uh, Europeans, given the, what's happened over the last week, it's probably not as attractive in terms of valuations. But yet, you know, if you look at the, the third arrow in Japan for, for the Abe government, Recruit is a, is a prime example of a company that should benefit. And so you, you look on one side, the valuations aren't that great, mm -hmm. but the other side you look right. at, well, this is a company that should do well hiring more women, you know, more, more jobs as Japan recovers.